This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer on Wednesday the 4th of January from St Peter's Church, Ipsley. My name is Linda Nicholas and I'm part of the ministry team at St Peter's and it's really great that you can join with me this morning. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. You laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of heaven and earth. To you be praise and glory forever, as your living word, eternal in heaven, assumed the frailty of our mortal flesh. May the light of your love be born in us to fill our hearts with joy as we sing. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The first reading this morning is Psalm 89, verses 1 to 37, and it's a psalm set for today, and it's a maskal of Ethan. Psalm 89. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord? A God feared in the council of the holy ones. Great and awesome above all that are around him. O Lord God of hosts, who is as mighty as you, O Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, you still them. You crushed Rahab like a carcass. You scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours, the world and all that is in it. You have founded them. The north and the south, you created them. Tabar and Hermon joyously praise your name. You have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand, high your right hand. Righteousness and justice of the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Happy are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. They exult in your name all day long and extol your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favour, our horn is exalted, for our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. 
Then you spoke in a vision to your faithful one and said, I have set the crown on one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found my servant David with my holy oil. I have anointed him. My hand shall always remain with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him. And in my name, his horn shall be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, you are my father. My God and the rock of my salvation. I will make him the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. Forever I will keep my steadfast love for him and my covenant with him will stand firm. I will establish his line forever and his throne as long as the heavens endure. If his children forsake my law and do not walk according to my ordinances, if they violate my statutes and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgression with the rod and their in iniquity with scourges. But I will not remove from him my steadfast love or be false to my faithfulness. I will not violate my covenant or alter the word that went forth from my lips. Once and for all, all I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His line shall continue forever and his throne endure before me like the sun. It shall be established forever like the moon an enduring witness in the skies. Truly, the Lord is our shield. As we sing of your love, O Lord, anoint us with the Spirit's seal, that we may praise your faithfulness and proclaim your truth from age to age, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now our second reading set for today is Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 11, which actually is Isaiah 61. So that's Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall till your land and dress your vines but you shall be called priests of the Lord. You shall be named ministers of our God. You shall enjoy the wealth of the nations and in their riches, you shall glory 
because their shame was double and dishonour was proclaimed as their lot. Therefore they shall possess a double portion. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I visit my sister over at Winchcombe in the summer months, we usually pay a visit to Hales Abbey. It's a 13th century Cistercian Abbey and it is in ruins now and if I go there on a quiet afternoon you can almost hear the pilgrims walking up to the abbey and it's quite beautiful but at the same time there is something profoundly sad about it for everything you see there is just a shadow of what's, what was once. Something that was once complete and holy is now desecrated and broken down. And the holiness of life that was exemplified in the community there is gone, only to be replaced by a bookshop stocked with teapot cozies, fragrant soaps and packets of crisps. And there's something quite sad about that, which is why when God says in Isaiah 61, they shall build up the ancient ruins they shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. There is something about that that feels so right. I mean, God wasn't, of course, speaking of the abbeys in Britain. He was speaking of Jerusalem, the holy city, the city of David, the place that once housed the Ark of the Covenant, and therefore the very presence of God himself. And far more important than the ruined buildings was the faith of Israel that was in tatters. It was a renewed faith and hope that the God who had brought them out of the fiery furnace in ages past would once again work his wonders. It doesn't take much looking around these days to see things in ruins, economies, jobs, lives, marriages, childhoods, educations. The list goes on and on. But our God is a God who builds up and restores. He makes all things new. And he's the God who has invited us along to pick up a metaphorical hammer and get to work rebuilding and refashioning the world around us. And the faith that's been entrusted to us and handed down to us by the saints. Where are the ruins in our committee, in our communities? Are they in the church? Are they out on the streets? Where do we find the ruins in our communities? Where are the places that we see and instantly identify something as being sad? Because right there is where God is at work. And right there is where God needs us 
It's where he plants us to be agents of rebuilding, refashioning and hope. Even amid the ashes and the crumbling, gnarled and ancient stone, God is at work. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. And we pray for the church that she may be a sign of God's light and goodness in our world. All the broken elements of our communities, towns, cities and the world. We pray that the church may be a sign of God's love and goodness and a beacon of hope for the most vulnerable people in our communities. In the Diocesan Diary today, we pray for the Diocese of Morogoro. We pray for the clergy and people of the newly established parishes within the Diocese of Morogoro as they seek to bring the good news of the gospel in difficult and challenging circumstances. We give thanks for the support being given to them by the congregation of Elmley Castle. We pray for our Church of St Peter and the work that is being done with our mission at Cumbina. Help us see clearly, Lord, what sorts of things that you think we need to do to engage with the community in a more sustainable way. Help us listen to what you want us to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for world leaders. But moved by the Holy Spirit, they may speak out against the scandal of hunger. And we pray for all those who hunger in our own community and around the world. The Lord Jesus fed the hungry and shared bread with all. Your people hunger now, Lord. Let us help to share what we have with others. May we share the blessings you give us and bring comfort to those in need. May we show love through our actions so all have enough to eat. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, we ask for your healing power on those who are enduring pain and illness. We pray for those mentioned in the weekly catch. We pray for those known to us and we name them quietly in our hearts. And we pray for those with no one to pray for them. Only you know, Lord. We share the grief of people close to us who've recently lost loved ones. We know that your everlasting light shines with us in moments of great sadness and great joy. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray the collect for the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us, in your own image, and yet more wonderfully restored us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that, 
as he came to share in our humanity, so we may share the life of his divinity, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light, bless us and fill us with peace. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for joining with me today. And I hope that you may be able to join with me tomorrow when the readings will be Psalm 48 and Isaiah 62. Psalm 48 and Isaiah 62. So hope to see you then. Bye for now.